Hey folks, Quilly Teen here, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Kerbal Space Program. It is the experimental build for version 1.2, and we are starting a new career mode while we started last time. Here, we now have a mission to go into orbit, and that is what we're going to look to do. So we're going to design a new ship. We're going to let Valentina take over this role here, and it's going to be relative... Well, it's actually going to be a fair bit different, actually, than the, the last ship we sent to just touch space a little bit. Because we don't need to bring as many science experiments, because we've already done most of it. We still have to get um, our material studies from the lower and upper atmosphere, but that's not what we're going to be doing today. We're going to get a very a relatively lightweight vessel so that we can um, get it to space a little bit easier. So we're going to have the command module there. We are going to make sure that we've got a heat shield below this. There's nothing going to be below this. We're just going to put a single parachute on top. That's the one we have to test. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and throw one of the drogue chutes in there just to make it a little bit easier. I'm going to put it here. It's going to help with our gravity turn, actually. It's going to look a little funny, but we're going to do that. Um, and then I'm also going to grab a two hot thermometer over there. And actually, maybe we'll throw an antenna on here. That way, because we can transmit the, the temperature information for full science. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So we can do multiple doses. So we're going to have an antenna so that Valentina can still get her favorite TV shows from Orbit. Um, you got your Netflix subscription package. It's part of the Kerbal Space Program. Um, what do you call it? Um, benefits package. So that's very exciting over there. So you don't have to miss an episode of... Uh, what are people watching these days? Stranger Things? Anyway, so I think that's good. We can run a little bit of science, but it's a very lightweight science, which is good. So this is going to be what's returning from space. So below that, we're going to make sure we've got a stack decoupler. Then we're going to put um, a fuel tank. It doesn't need much. Something like that, plus the terrier. So the idea is the Terrier is going to be the thing that is mostly responsible for circularizing our orbit and properly entering into orbit. This is relatively light. I, I, I have an old spreadsheet to try to calculate what the delta V from this will be, but that will be kind of tricksy. Certainly, we could take a, a quick look at our thrust weight ratio. So we've got a gravity is going to pull on us by about 30. Again, I'm, I'm sort of rounding. And we are pushing forward by about 60. So we've got a two to one or two, you know, a thrust weight ratio of about two ish. And um, when you're that high up, uh, the thrust ratio, thrust weight ratio is a little less important because um, a small thrust weight is often enough to make great maneuvers in space. Um, and a large one is also not really a problem because you're not worried about atmospheric pressure. Mostly worried if we've brought enough fuel, but I think we're going to be okay. Anyway, we're going to get, uh, let me just do this to get another decoupler so I don't have to find it in the list, but we're going to use a large fuel tank, another one, and I think another one. And I think that will be our ascent stage. Let's get a swivel engine on there. Let's throw uh, some fins on here for stability like that. Oh, if we're going to be transmitting stuff, because transmitting uses a lot of power, I was debating putting batteries on here, but power is going to be fine as long as we're doing it on this burn stage, so I think we're going to be okay. I'll just have to be a little bit careful in space to not do a transmit there, but I think that's going to be okay. Let's fix the staging. We want our drogue chute to open first before our main chute. We want that, this, that, that, that looks good. Now, what's our current weight? We're currently sitting at 11.35 tons, so let's call that a negative downforce of 113 kilonewtons, and we know we're at 170 with this, so we are definitely good to go up. Is there anything else we want to do? No, I think that's okay. I, I don't know um, what our delta V is. Um, how much fuel do we have here? These are 400, so we've got 1,200. So, and then our weight is what? 11.35? Yeah, no, my spreadsheet is, can't possibly be right. This says my, my delta V of this bottom stage is 1400, which seems too low, but it, I don't know, it might be accurate. Tell you what, if we're worried, let's go ahead and overkill on the fuel. I mean... This means we're, we're carrying extra weight to space, but let's give it a go. I guess the other thing is, if I do have enough thrust to weight, but I don't really, right? Because that's now 12. I could add a little bit more fuel down here. As long as we still have a thrust to weight ratio of over, say, 1.2, we should be okay. So now we're sitting at 
Now, you know what? I think we could boo. So this is probably way too much fuel. I'm, I'm hoping we overkill it. Okay, there we go. So we'll launch a little bit slower, but still should be able to go up. And this will give us a lot more juice. So, all right. This is Orbiter 1. Let's see how it goes. You know, I'd actually prefer the font there to have, like, Ceres, because it looks like Orbiter L or something here. And I'd like, like, you know, the, the I, capital I, to look better. I don't know. We're going to launch that. Tiny little thing. Wouldn't it be cool if there were a little Ceres in there? Okay, SAS is turned on. Full throttle is a go. Let's do it. Again, a slower launch here because our th thrust to weight ratio isn't ridiculously high. So we're using more of our thrust to just cancel out gravity. Uh, but I think, I think this rate is good. I think this rate is good. As long as we get a half decent gravity turn, I think we're going to be quite happy with that. Uh, so at about 100 meters per second, this is typically when people start. Oh, it's actually self-gravity turning a little bit because our weight is a little bit off-center because of the um, because of that drogue chute. It also has a little bit more air resistance than the thermometer, which I just realized we are not. I'm going to lock this. We are not doing that. I'm going to transmit that information. We're not going to get all of it, but most of it. So we didn't get it from the ground, but that's okay. We got lower atmosphere. I'll run it again when we're at upper atmosphere. And I'm not gravity turning enough, so let's go and get that. Oh, it's hard to manage so many things simultaneously. So we're going to want to get... Usually, I used to say at about 45 degrees at 15K. I think we were going to want to go a little steeper than that, just to make sure that there's no real problems. I'd like to go a little bit more on the equator. I mean, anytime you burn sideways like this, you do lose some efficiency, but it's better if you launch completely east-wise. There's advantages to your your path. So um, I'm actually quite happy with our ascent profile right now. I'm not going to pitch down too much more. I'm going to try to keep it within the prograde marker here because if you go outside, it means that you're pointing your nose not as much in the direction that the sort of wind is going in. Um, is this, oh, over Kerbin's waters. Oh, yes, yeah, different biome. That's good. We just snuck it in there, and then we can do a log from the upper atmosphere. Because, yeah, lower atmosphere, you can do temperature scans over all these different biomes, which is really handy. Not enough electric charge. Oh, we had to wait for it to reload. Let's try that again. There we go. Just barely snuck it in there. Okay, let's take a look at what we're going here. We're going pretty steep. Oh, we're, we're already in space here, so... Let's bring that way down. I'm still going to let it burn. That way we can still use the gimbling to give us some control authority. Um, and I think our stage just ran out of fuel. Okay, good-ish, hopefully. So I haven't lit the next engine, although I guess I could. I'm going to light it and just kill the thrust, just to make sure that's okay. A little higher than we needed to and not quite as horizontal as I was like. That being said, I'm content that we have plenty of thrust in here for us to circulate. So now we're going to space because our apoapsis is above 70,000. Um, and what we're going to want to do is when we get closer to the apoapsis, we're going to want to burn effectively prograde, but honestly, it's mostly towards the um, the horizon, which is mostly going to be the same thing. I mean, literally at the apoapsis, we're going to be tangential, so they're going to be the same. We're going to want to burn towards the horizon to start to circularize. We are now in space, so we can do another temperature log. However, I will not transmit it this time because that will basically use up all of our electric charge. I'm simply going to keep the experiment and that'll be good enough. We can unpin that, and that's going to be fine. Um, I don't remember. I don't think I got a crew report uh, from the upper atmosphere. That's right. Maybe we can get it on our way down. So we will try to do that. So I don't know how long, we, how far we are away from this node, which means I don't really know when to start my burn. We don't have the maneuver planning or anything like that, which isn't good. But I'm going to go ahead and start burning now. And what I'm looking for is I don't want the apoapsis to climb too much. You see, it's climbing very slowly, which I'm happy about. And especially, it's not getting further away from us. We are actually getting closer to the apoapsis, which means I'm not burning too early. Hopefully, I'm not burning too late. See the green line here? This is my connection to the Kerbal Space Center. Now, I don't need to worry about the connection other than transmitting science right now because I have someone in the capsule that is controlling it. But you can see how the orbital path is starting to flatten out, which is great, which is very good. And the apoapsis is is closing in on us, but not too fast. So I think I think we may be a little early with the burn, but better early than way, way, way too late. Because you can always bring it back down after. 
Now we're still closing in on the apoapsis, so we didn't start too, too early, but we definitely started early enough. So we're, we're pushing this out. Basically, we're getting more and more sideways speed, such that when we fall, instead of falling and hitting Kerbin, we're going to fall and miss Kerbin. And that's what an orbit is. It is permanently, it's, it's falling towards the ground and missing forever. It's just the same way they fly in the um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So just tweaking that there. I forgot that I'm not locked to prograde. And any second now, the periapsis, which is currently inside the planet, will pop out. Periapsis is the lowest point. And at some point, they're going to start to move sideways like that. Um, and that means we're basically circular. In fact, like when they're, they're sort of split on the other side, that's basically your sweet spot, depending on exactly how you time your burn. So now we're in an orbit. Our lowest point is now over here at 93 kilometers, and our highest point is 96. Very circular orbit. Very nice. We completed the contract orbit cor orbit Kerbin. Um, we also... Oh, these are some old contracts. Right, right, right. And, of course, some more milestones as well. So there we go. Valentina in orbit over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave her here for a split second. We're going to go back to the space center, which we can totally do. I'm going to check the... Let's see if there's any relevant contracts, because we just finished uh, one contract. So can we take another one that's going to be relevant to our return? Looks like the answer is no. Um... Yeah, this is the regular radial parachute. It's not the um, it's not the drogue one which you have with us. This would require us to stage a swivel engine at um, at a really awkward altitude. I'm just gonna cancel that one. It'll recycle. We'll see about some others. And then there's specific zones. Yeah, I'll probably end up canceling a bunch of these. Oh, there we go. Radial mount drogue chute in flight. This is the one we've got. Oh, our speed is gonna be way too high though. I think the only way for us to test this, it's worth a lot of money, the only way for us to successfully test this would be to um, put it on a plane. Because this is a really low speed for that altitude. A really low speed. And we're not going to do the SRB in a suborbital trajectory. I'm going to decline that and just see if it refreshes it. Explore Kerbin. You've left enough fuel tanks to return from orbit, right? We want deposits on those parts back. Return to Cor Kerbin from orbit. I'm going to accept that. We might be able to complete that as is. So if I go to the tracking station now, I can track any vessels that are still in existence. For example, Orbiter 1. Oh, it looks like there's multiple ground stations as well. Nice. Excellent. So we're going to pick Orbiter 1, and I'm going to hit Fly. So we're going to go back to Valentina. Hello. And if we take a look at the contracts over here, Kerbin flying. Oh, that's the parachute. Return to court. Kerbin from orbit presumably will work. So how do we get down? Well, it's very easy. We're going to just turn around. So we face retrograde, which is that symbol. So again, uh, this means we are facing the opposite direction of our travel, or more importantly, our engine is facing in the direction that we're going. So if we were to burn, burn the engine now, we would slow down. So we're going to do that. We're going to slow down enough so that our periapsis is within the atmosphere, which it is now. We're going to bring it a little lower than that, though. Bring it down to around there. So we're going to be coming in right other sideways, and our lowest point in orbit right now is still 22 kilometers above the surface of the Earth, but we're going to hit enough air there that it will cause us to sink down and actually stop. And that's good. So we actually still have some engine, some fuel left in the tank, but I'm not as concerned about it. So I'm just going to turn, uh, let's turn this way. And poof. Goodbye. Excellent. And then we'll do that. Well, it's not going to stay in that direction that's going to be okay and i'm just going to go ahead and fast forward times 50 again as soon as we enter the atmosphere it will stop fast forwarding and because of our shape here i actually don't have to keep the sas on we should naturally as we enter the atmosphere it should naturally keep our butt facing in there i realize it's very dark um especially on youtube uh normally i would have a mod that keeps everything lit up a little bit more just for video purposes there you go here you can see my outline uh, as we come down, though, things will get a little bit bright as we get those uh, those heat effects, which are not due to friction. They're, they, they're due to compression of the air. So my idea is to, as soon as the drogue is safe to deploy, I will want to do that um, because... Oh, interesting. Oh, there it is. I was going to say it doesn't say the speed anymore because we want our speed to be a little slower, which honestly, since we're going so sideways now on our return, almost certainly we would actually hit this um, this speed before we drop below three kilometers. Almost certainly, because there's a lot more air now to slow us down. 
So, um, I'm tempted to fast forward, but it's probably unwise to do so. Eh, what could possibly go wrong? I'm just going to wait for the air to get a little bit thicker here. We're not even getting like the initial sort of heat effects showing up. But you can see, look, I've got SAS turned off. There's nothing to help our stability. But you see how it's sort of wobbling back and forth while facing retrograde here? That's because the air itself uh, and our aerodynamic shape is actually keeping us facing retrograde here. Okay, so then I'm going to kill the time warp just to make sure that the physics system is as accurate as possible. And it's hopefully going to be a hands-off return here because this capsule shape should be fine, um, unless one of the things that is poking out the side causes some problems. But it looks like we're okay. Our center of mass is relatively centered. Uh, we've got nothing that is causing weird aerodynamic effects. Also, nothing is currently heating up, although that might change a little bit. Right now, the air is still very thin. See so our blader over here? It's very explicit. Our heat shield is intended to burn away as we re-enter. That's actually one of the ways that it dissipates heat is by burning itself away instead of just getting hotter and hotter and hotter. So we should be okay. So if we go inside the um, inside here and we look out the one window we've got, we're starting to see some heat effects. Very nice. We've got our own nav ball. You can steer entirely from here if you would like, actually. It's very exciting. Uh, you can even like use the mouse and like drag the throttle. I mean, there's nothing to throttle right now, but it's technically possible, which I think is very cool. You hit C to get out of that view. It's, it's a little unintuitive, but it's there. And again, I'm, I don't have the SAS on, I'm not steering, but our butt is facing where we want it to face. I'm just going to rotate here. Whoa, that was a bit of a mistake. Turn on the SAS temporarily. I forgot that it wouldn't fix itself. I just wanted the, uh, the sky to technically be above us and the ground below us, but I shouldn't mess with that at all. So again, SAS is off. Aerodynamic forces are automatically keeping us stable, stable-ish. A little bit of shaking, but Valentina doesn't seem to mind. G-forces are extremely low, because we're still hitting very, very thin air here. It's extremely microscopic atmosphere, so we're not slowing down much. You can see our speed is barely, barely bleeding away here. But soon we'll be hitting thicker air, and the G-forces of the braking effects are going to go up and up and up and up. And then when we deploy the parachute, that's going to get especially rough. Mm hmm You know, if I was more into video editing, this would be the place where I'd do, I'd do the video fast-forwarding, but... You guys can take, uh, skip ahead a minute if you want. I don't mind. We don't have any lights on our ship, do we? Mm, that's too bad. We'll have to do something about that. More lights. Moon! I promise we're coming for you. Actually, we'll probably go to Minmus first. Especially since we don't have um, a mod that gives us Delta V calculations. Minmus is a lot more forgiving that way. And so it's probably a lot safer to go there first. Plus, it's generally... Um, recommended. Minimus is further away, but it's so much smaller and lighter that um, it's actually a lot easier to land on. And it's got these giant flat lakes, which are great targets, as opposed to the moon, which is relatively lumpy and bumpy. Minimus is basically, it's a second moon of Kerbin. It's much smaller. It's, you know, like, it's a large asteroid or second moon. It's a very large asteroid. It is very, it's very much a moon, but a tiny one. And it's made out of ice cream. Because... So G-forces are going up. We're now at 1G. So basically, if Valentina could stand up and walk around in her pod, she would feel just as heavy as on Earth and would be able to stand, well, not, like, well, upright relative to the floor here. But now the G-forces are going up. We're at 1.5 and 2 G-force. So she's experiencing double the force of gravity um, and is scrooching down very hard into her seat right now. And that's going to keep going up here as the... Uh, well, we're bleeding off a lot of speed now. The air is getting thicker. It is going to hit sort of a balance point, at which point it'll start. the G-forces will start to drop again. But we're hitting 2.5. We might hit 3 Gs. I'm not sure. As we continue to hit the thicker air. So again, we're targeting this once we... Uh, it'll be interesting to see when the drogues can be... The drogue can be deployed. Mm, there we go. Our speed relative to the air pressure and all that balance means we're no longer getting heat effects, which means we don't need any more ablation at all. We have lots left. And, yeah, so any second now, we're going to hit 10 kilometers. Boom. So we were there. And actually, I can deploy the drogue. So I'll wait. Uh, no, let's go ahead and deploy the drogue now. That's going to slow us down pretty dramatically. And as soon as the second bit lights up, basically, oh, now I'm going to deploy the regular chute because it is safe to deploy now. And there we go. So, this is going to be a relatively long return with all these parachutes put out here. Actually, I'm tempted to cut the drogue. Because we only really needed it to get there. But I don't know, for safety, I guess I'll leave it in there. Um, again, the drogue is a 
Um, it's it's a much smaller shoot. You can see it's like tiny compared to the other one, but it also means it's much less likely to rip off, but it doesn't bring us to a safe landing. I'll put a cut in here. Uh, certainly Valentina is going to make her return perfectly fine and safe. I'm not concerned about that. That's good. When I land, I'll probably um, remove her from the capsule that, and then put her back in. That way we can do an EVA on. Looks like we're going to land in the grasslands somewhere. Yeah, you can see all the uh, little green dots for the signals. Oh, that's quite cool. Um, we're going to land in the grasslands somewhere. We'll get a little bit of science from the ground, but that's that. Thank you very much for watching another episode, folks. And I'll see you next time when we get even higher and further and... Oh, we're definitely going to start plotting our, our run to one of the moons. We may have to do a little bit more sciencing on the ground first. We'll see how it goes. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.